Hey everybody, so today's video is gonna be my top five most gorgeous fish that can live in a 10 gallon aquarium. And a lot of these fish will be your centerpiece fish in that tank. So let's begin, starting off at number five is the Daisy's Rice Fish. Now you can have a school of these guys in a 10 gallon, you can have a small school. The color on this fish is absolutely gorgeous. I love the blue, the males will have a darker blue color, um, especially when they're trying to show off to the females. Although the females won't be as nice as the males, they will still have a nice light blue color. Um, I love this fish. I honestly think it's a great substitute or a great um, alternative to guppies. Um, you know, the color on this fish is really nice. Um, in a lot of cases, better than most guppy species out there. And um, yeah, you know, if you're not looking to breed your fish, um, you know, you just get a school of these guys, there's like a really high chance that they won't breed unless you actually, you know, try to breed them. And if you do, in that case, it's fairly easy. All right, so coming in at number four is the Okefenokee Pygmy Sunfish. Now try say that 10 times. Um, this fish comes from the Everglades region of the United States. Um, unlike most other sunfish out there, this one will stay very, very small. Um, and it's a super cool fish to have. Um, there's a lot of other, you know, different types of pygmy sunfish out there. There's another one that looks very similar to the Okefenokee called the Everglades sunfish or the Everglades pygmy sunfish. But um, in my opinion, the Okefenokee is the nicest one out of all of them. I have not kept this fish yet, so I don't have any like personal experience on this fish. So I can't really tell you, um, you know, how peaceful they are. I'm pretty sure they are peaceful, I think. Um, they could be a little territorial, but what I really do know is that they stay really small. You can keep small group in a 10 gallon tank and they have amazing color. I love the blue outline on the fins when they mature. Um, it's super nice. I really want this fish super bad. That's my like, I guess, next breeding project if I do get some in. Alright, so coming in at number three is the Black Tiger Dario. Now the Scarlet Badis is pretty popular, but if you want to step it up a level, this is the fish that you have to get. Um, the males will have a darker black mask on the face and they will have a darker maroon color um, on the body. The males will also have bigger and um, nicer extended fins than the females, um, but still yet the females still have a light maroon color and that's still really nice. And in a 10 gallon tank, I have three pairs. Now, um, this fish is territorial, I'll tell you that. So, um, three pairs, it's kind of stretching it. Um, I think a safe, um, you know, amount is two pairs. And I wouldn't do like a combination, three males, one female, because that's gonna be three males trying to breed with the one female. So at least try to have like a one to one ratio, even a two to one ratio would be, you know, playing it safe. Even though they're small, you don't want to have a lot of them in a 10 gallon tank. Once you add them into the tank, they will set up their own little area and that's going to be, you know, their territory. Now you can have other fish with the Black Tiger Dario, but I would just choose kind of wisely, maybe a little bit more faster moving fish. Um, you know, surface dwellers will be perfect. Um, the Black Tiger Darios will just be on the bottom and, you know, the surface dwellers will be on the top. They won't have really any interactions. So um, you can keep other fish with them, but, and right now they are pretty popular. I do see them on a lot of sites. So um, if you want to get one or, you know, a pair at least, um, now is the time. All right, so coming in at number two is the Sudamugil Rainbow Fish. Now this is the smallest rainbow fish out there. Now what makes them really popular is their fins. Now when they mature, especially the males, they will show off their fins. And as you can see, super nice. There's a lot of types of pseudomugils out there. Um, some of the more popular ones are the Gertrudes, Fricatas, Pascai, Luminatis, um, and Signifer. There's a bunch of other ones, but actually, you're probably not gonna be able to see them for any more in the hobby. And that's because the government in Australia, where pseudomugils are from, are putting a lot of regulations of taking fish out from the wild. And I think at this point, you can't ship out anything from Australia. So a lot of pseudomugils at this point are gonna be tank raised, um, but there's a lot of other nicer species of pseudomugils like um, this one um, that you, know, you probably won't be able to keep. But even the ones that are available are super nice. In a 10 gallon tank, you can fit around maybe two pairs. Um, you can probably squeeze some more in and get away with it, but um, I would try to stay around four. Um, and they're great with other fish as well. Trust me, if you do see some for sale, um, if you have the space for them, get them. 
um, they will be your um, centerpiece fish and I absolutely love my good shooting rainbows. Um, they're super nice. Alright, so coming in at number one is the pearl killifish. Now, the pearl killifish is a notobranchus killifish. There's a bunch of other notobranchus killies out there and I'm hoping I'm saying that um, first name right. But uh, the notobranchus killifish are annual killifish, which means they're only going to live around a year. With my pearl killifish pair, I had maybe like three months with them but they are absolutely gorgeous. My favorite types of notobranches killifish are the Ranchovii killifish, which is more like a rainbow pattern, and I've seen some in real life absolutely gorgeous, and I've kept the pro killifish. In my opinion, this is the nicest freshwater fish out there, um, and I honestly love them. Even though they're only gonna live a year, um, I would still get them. Since they do live a year, I do recommend that you do try to at least breed them, um, so that you can, you know, hopefully have this killifish all the time rather than having to buy one maybe like every four or five months. Um, so yeah, I honestly do think that you should try and breed them, but if you don't want to breed them and you just want to have a nice fish for a little bit, um, this is the fish to go for. Um, but due to its fins, try not to put it with anything that, you know, is considered a fin nipper or anything that's known to nip at fins. Um, so I would actually recommend having more bottom dwellers with this fish. Um, because it's kind of slow moving, it's kind of like a beta, you know, how it swims. So yeah, maybe more bottom dwellers so nothing really disturbs the fish while it's swimming. But honestly, if you can get your hands on this fish, it's kind of a little bit more common. But if you can get your hands on one or a pair, um, I would really recommend that you uh, get it and um, try to breed it. So anyways, that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys thought that there was a fish that should have been on this list, please comment that down below. I'm really curious to hear you guys' opinions and maybe you guys will mention a fish that I have not heard of yet and maybe that will be my next breeding project, who knows. So um, yeah, comment those down below um, and if you like the video, make sure to leave a like and if you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, that bell notification so you get notified every time I upload. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching again and I'll see you guys in the next